We're going to do a video on making a uh, spin cast mold. Uh, the fellow who is going to be making it is uh, Raymond Duncan, better known as Pappy Ray. He's been doing this for the last 14 years and I believe an expert in uh, spin cast mold making. He also has uh, Ray's custom baits and he designs a lot of his uh, uh, baits for the uh, pro, um, tournament fishermen in the area of bass fishermen. He likes working with the uh, bigger plugs, the bass plugs, and when I first met him I was asking him to uh, put some weights on a uh, 60 degree uh, a barbless hook uh, size 10 through 18 and uh, he sort of uh, threw me out of uh, his shop. He said he doesn't like work on those small hooks. But over some time and uh, working with some of my friends I got to know him and over the last two years we've become real good friends. In fact, he's made me a number of spin cast molds for my little hooks. Uh, though I hear him mumbling under his breath, uh, he is uh, really a, a fantastic person to work with. I enjoy our meetings together and um, I come up with an idea and he's able to uh, uh, fix it and solve it and uh, I make a mold. So uh, I would like to take this time to um, say, Pappy, over the couple of years, I do appreciate it. And uh, everybody asks, what's a spin cast mold? So I thought we'd start this video from start to finish. And I hope you enjoy it. I'll show you the uh, bait hooks that we're going to use. And basically, I'm taking some of Pappy's famous uh, hammerhead uh, jigs that he uses for crappie. And I'm converting them to trout. But I'm sure that you can tie on them and use them for crappie also. Uh, thank you for watching. To begin with, you uh, have four nine by a quarter inch silicone discs. Uh, in this case, you see Pappy taking off the uh, paper. Uh, there's a red one and a white one. Uh, they make up uh, each two make up a half. Uh, make sure you remove the paper because uh, you don't want to cook that on when you go through that uh, uh, vulcanization process. So we have the uh, two together. And now he's going to find the center. They are nine inches long, so he's setting up his all for uh, his scribe for four and a half. And you see he does it in a, a number of different places. Marks it. Looking for the center. He makes a hole in the center, and uh, he marks across each the, the nine inches to have two halves. Now you have to decide on the gate you're going to use for your uh, the number of. Uh, bait you're going to be making. In our case, we're doing um, 25. That's the spindle. You don't see that's a spindle for four there. They just put down. He also has the center. I have the uh, spindle. There it is for 25. Uh, Babby makes all these spindles out of aluminum, and he has an, a whole box full of them, and anywhere from, uh, like you see there, four to 25. I think the uh, biggest one he had was 32. I haven't seen that one lately, but uh, he may have thrown it away, so, he, so I don't see it. But 25 seems to be the uh, uh, biggest, or the most gates he has on one of his little uh, gates for the solder, as it, uh, or excuse me, as a lead as it goes through. He's putting on the uh, top because you're going to need that for the. Uh, for when you put on the second half, it's got to have a space for the uh, lead to get through. Now he is measuring the uh, distance from the center. And he's going to scribe that onto his, uh, his silicone disc. And the purpose of that is to basically get it in the center. There's two marks on every one of his little... Uh, uh, gates. He's looking for those. They're the two marks 
for placement and he usually places it on the left side. He lines up because this is 25. One of the uh, gates is going to be on the line and the other gate, uh, the other half is going to be between the gates. He places that on there. He's at his distance. Now he lifts it off. He's marking the left side. So he'll know that that's the left side in case that uh, disc gets turned around. He's placing it back on because now what he wants to mark is the center of each one of those gates. And once he has the center of each one of those gates, if it was an even number, he could strike a line all the way across the nine inches. But because this is an odd number, he has to go from the center to that uh, center of that gate he just marked with that all, and he draws his line, something like this. Line up his uh, aluminum disc for his, his uh, gates, his lead gates. Now what he's going to do is he's going to make probably it looks like a uh, three quarter uh, half inch to three eighths of an inch away from those little uh, alls he has he puts a little circle like that you can see on the to create a spacing for the actual little gate that he's going to create to go into the uh, the lore the bait I'd like to have a little music behind this but I don't know how that's work would work out he's now we're getting our because we have 25 and we're using three different baits, we're going to do 8, 8, and 9. So the first one is the hammerhead he's putting on, and you see how he lines it. The reason, too, for the um, drawing that line from the center all the way to the edge is so he can line up the shaft of the hook on that line. So he's got a little space from his uh, to, to create his small gate into the bait okay so we got all of our base we've got uh, 132 hammerhead or uh, 164 hammerhead and a 132 roundhead jig now Pappy's cutting wires these they happen to be 028 I believe that was the size I picked up uh, he's cutting them so he can uh, put them in the eye of the hook. That'll place every time you you know you uh, go to put put it your hook in the mold. You'll actually put the eye on that little a steel shank. You see, you can see it over there. They are sharp. Those little lines. You better be careful when you put them on. He's They'll go into your finger like a little needle. Now he's got that made. And what he's going to do now is he's going to take the uh, center out of um, the top. Well, you've got to take the center out of the white and you got to take the center out of the, uh, the red mold because that's going to go on the top to make the second half. But he's cutting out the center here. Uh, and he's going to use that center to make little strips to cover the shank of the hook. I might say too that the uh, knife, the blades that he are using are surgical blades. I guess the silicone really uh, does a number on the blades, and 
you've got to change them uh, quite often. In our other video I made, it was much longer than this. Pappy was talking in the background. Here we're making those. He's making those little strips. And there, I'm going to say they're like not a quarter inch, but an eighth of an inch. And I don't think it matters very much. It just you, you'll see when he places it on the shank of the hook. But in the background, when I was made the first video, the radio was on. It was on a country and western station here in Springfield, the Bull. And anybody who has gone into Pappy's shop, you know that uh, he always has that radio on, listen to country and western music. Uh, so that was playing in the background. And I said, boy, this is going to be a great video because it's all natural, especially people who had visited him. But when I published it, uh, YouTube told me that that was all copyrighted. I couldn't use them. So now I have no sound except for me narrating here. Um, I hope you don't get bored with it, but I wanted a detail uh, video on this making of the spin cast mold for number one, should I ever decide to do it, which I don't think I will. But for some of you that are thinking about it, you'll, you'll see exactly how a professional does it. And, um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you don't get too bored with this. But it's kind of unique. What I like about the spin cast molds over the do it molds is that, first of all, it's consistent. Uh, you don't have all the cleanup you do on a on a do it mold. Maybe I'm not pouring right, but uh, I haven't been doing it that long. But I notice I'm cleaning up everything that I pour. Sometimes I get some great ones out of a dual mold, and the other times I, I don't. But with a spin cast mold, uh, everything is under the mold is under pressure. It's consistent. You'll see how it gets locked in. Uh, everything gets locked in. It's pinned in. The little nuts. But as you see right here, he is putting this um, silicone over the shaft. Let me get lined up here. Over the shaft of the uh, hook so now you're gonna have the eye and when you go to put the hook on when the mold is complete uh, you're gonna have the shank being held down and the eye being held down so it's not gonna move at all in that mold now it's got everything placed and let's see what's next oh yeah now he's gonna put on the um, guide post I guess you could say one is a little chestnut and he spaces those so I guess they're evenly around that's a little chestnut and he's gonna go around I guess every four he said right here every four he's going to do leave a space in between because he puts a little uh, pin in I guess it's a here we go what's that called oh guide post he puts a little guide post in he puts those all around so now you got a chestnut a guide post uh, that's going to guide that top section so it fits exactly the same once it's vulcanized so we've got all the guides on and that's what it looks so far getting close now he's powdering the um, that is a uh, steel like this disc and everything that these uh, silicone uh, mold is going to go in he, he's powdered with mica it's not talcum powder it's mica and uh, you got to make sure it has powder you won't get it that mica on there you won't get it out now the next thing you don't want to forget is taking off that uh, protective paper that's gonna be really hard to get off the bottom if you don't do that now you put it in here 
as you put it in and you're pressing it down, you got to get all the air out. In fact, you can't see it, but on the video, sometimes I see a little puff of that mica coming out of uh, underneath when you he's pressing. There it goes. Kind of cool. But you want to press it all down to get the air out. And that's important. Well, I wish I had the uh, voice of Pappy talking, but. And now uh, he's going to you got the white one, which he has cut the center out. And he's cutting the center out, as you can see, that it's, it's approximately about a two inch uh, little spindle that's sticking up. That's creating that little uh, track for the, uh, the lead to go down. Now he's doing mica on everything all around. And you really got to coat it pretty good. Oh, messed up. I guess the hook caught that little bag. Well, you do have to powder it. Abby said, if you don't forget that, you'll never get it apart. So we got the white going on next. And the difference between the white and red, I guess one was a, uh, a higher temperature or will last, a little, white might last a little bit longer. It'll be a little bit more stronger. I uh, have no idea, but you certainly can look it up. And there's probably a spec on it, but. He's putting on the white. Now goes the red one. You can press it down pretty good. Don't forget that mica. Is it? No. That ring, that metal ring, get, will get really hot, and that'll go into our vulcanizing machine or Pappy's vulcanizing machine. Now that comes the top. I'm giving them the top. Don't forget to powder that. I found a little piece of paper on the edge. There's a, a mark. It goes on a certain way. So it, there is a mark he's looking for, a black mark. And he puts it in. He passes it over to me, and I'm taking it over to the vulcanizing machine. There it is. I'm going to slip it in that center part where you see the two whites. I'm going to pump it up to uh, 400 pounds pressure and turn it on for an hour and a half, a half hour for warm up, an hour for under pressure, under heat at 400 pounds. And I think the temperature was like 350, 375. Now we finished. It came out of there. It is very hot. Baby's taken off the top and you better wear those gloves. You got to be careful. It is, it is hot. And you notice he's got it on a wood panel there because uh, it's so hot it would burn his Formica top. Now he gets his surgical blades out, or a little knife, surgical knife. And he's taking off the uh, excess trim around the top. Okay, we got the top off. 
Then normally he would trim out that excess there, but this time in our video, we're trying to do everything and trying to remember he forgot it, but he'll play catch up later on in the video with that edge. But the time to, tr to trim it, I guess, was when it's in its uh, ring. Again, the ring is hot. Right now, that uh, silicone is very, very hot too. So you'll see he'll keep one of the gloves on when he's holding it down. But so we'll kind of take a look at where our mold's in. We're ready to take it apart. But before we take it apart, you better mark it so you know at least how to get it back on. Um, taking a Sharpie. And he's putting a line from top to bottom. Now it's marked. And now he notices, oh, we got the uh, trim on there. See, it doesn't, you, do, you could take it out a lot easier, I guess, what is in the mold. But I'm watching him cut here. It doesn't look like it's hard to write. To take it off even if it isn't in the mold so I think if you follow the steps one by one and making sure you get everything right then you'll end up with uh, a mold that uh, that you can work with and that you don't have to uh, you don't waste it I guess you could say because just the material, I think, is over $30. Now he's taking it out. Okay. And as he looks at it, uh, I powder painted those little round head jigs. I didn't do the cure long enough. I cheated a little bit, and some of my powder paint is coming off because it is gets hot. So that you see it's black, my little black ones. He's taking out that gate. Uh for the lead to flow through and right now he's cutting little uh, slots he's taking his knife going straight down that hook and he's taking that little piece of uh, silicone out he's got to do that for each one of them and when you cut it don't go on an angle, go straight down alongside of that shank because you want that uh, silicone to hold that hook in place. That one came out really nice. Now he's got, uh, let's see, he's got 23 more to do. Okay, he's got them all done. And uh, oh, there's the last one done. Now he's finished taking those little slits out. Now what he's doing here is just trimming our um, little wires that were, he made them long in the beginning because they guess to go up in the mold, but now he's trimming them. Uh, I forgot what he said he needed. He needed just a little over top of that hook. So what that'd be probably three eighths of an inch. He noticed on a couple of them, they're crooked. He says, when you pull them out, make sure you have them in the top part of that hole. Don't change that top part. But he says, angle it over so it, the bottom straightens out a little bit. You notice he didn't take it out of the hole. If you take it out of the hole, you're really putting it in a diff different place. It'll, it'll close up on you. And I think we had three of them. But he went through and relined that up. It's a pretty good job. Then he trimmed it a little bit. There's another crooked one. Okay, we've got them all done. What's next? He is going to start. Uh, as you can see, the lead's going to come down the center and shoot out to those uh, grooves, those 25 grooves we had. Um, oh yeah, he's the center part where the lead's coming through. 
he's making sure there's no burrs, no hang up for the lead. You want the lead when you, it's in that spin cast, mo, a spin cast machine to drop right through and, and he's making sure that that uh, hole that he has created has, has no burrs on it and won't hang up the lead. So when it drops, it'll drop straight down, hit the bottom half of the mold, and because it's spinning, it'll just spin around to all those 25 little gates he has. Fabi is a perfectionist. He wants it done right. I've learned a lot from him over these past two years. Now he's looking and he's going to switch and he's going to start cutting the gates. And now this is a little tricky. You don't, he's got a little tool he made, two little blades. He starts light at the top and he angles it down about, I'd say a 45 degree. And then he comes in with another knife and he takes a couple millimeters. It's not much off the top because you want to create your gate real thin. So the lead goes in and it breaks away from your, your bait. So you'll notice he's going in a little bit and he's angling that knife down. Then he goes to the right and then he goes, flips it over and he goes to the left. And there you have your gate. See the gate? on the wall. There it is. Now he's got to do that 24 more times. And then when you, after you do that gate, he wants to make sure there's no, see as they come down there with some sidewalls, he wants to make sure those are out. So he's got to go around now and take each side of those sidewalls out. What do we got next? Oh yeah. Again, you when that drops down, the lead drops down, we don't want anything affecting the gate. So he's taking that little uh, burr off in the middle with that little mold part off in the middle. And he will take some emery paper because he's not he wants that to be real smooth. I should say that when it went into the vulcanizer, when it went into that vulcanizer, it's just like making a tire. I guess that's how they make tires. Now, let's see what's next. Oh, yes, he is going to. He wants to fill those two little holes. Oh, no, he doesn't. Not doing that yet. He's marking the side, notching it. So he goes on the same all the time. Now we poured it. We made our first pouring, and that one little right marked that little dot uh, didn't fill. 
So he's going to uh, open the gate a little bit on that. And we'll do another pouring, put it in you know, the uh, spin cast, spin cast machine, and pour another lead and check out to see if now that will pour, uh, give a complete pour to that bait. And again, he marked it, you see how he marked it with his... Uh, little pen okay I'm putting the top on line it up with that little groovy ass see it now it's finished I poured it he's gonna go check it out and everything looks good that's where it was and everything looks good now that's what it, okay he wants to fill those little holes up with and he's using a gasket cement from automotive I think uh, O'Reilly's automotive is where he picked it up it's the uh, uh, gasket cement it's a red color you put it on when you want to make your gasket if you don't have gasket material and it will seal it and what he's doing is filling those holes with this uh, gasket cement so that when um, we pour we will not have lead going into those holes and may and, and it may affect the um, flow to one of those gates He's a perfectionist. Cleaning off that cement. And now he's going to put a little talcum powder on it. He uses, sometimes you use talcum powder in the mold uh, to get those uh, parts to release easier. It's not mica powder that we used before, it's the talcum powder. So we've got that mold done and I get ready to start pouring. Thanks for watching.